In a previous video this week, we discussed how the Imperial Captain, Lorth Nita, ultimately came to be hated by Darth Vader long before the events of The Empire Strikes Back, where becoming a favor of Admiral Kendall Ozzel would cost Nita his life. But we also mentioned there was an event that occurred long before, where Nita, then a lieutenant commander in the Republic Navy, actually rescued Anakin Skywalker during the Battle of Coruscant, which if Darth Vader knew about, may have earned Nita a pass for his failure over two decades later. In this video expose, we'll look at the significant role Lorth Nita played in the rescue of Supreme Chancellor Palpatine after his capture by Grievous and the Separatists, and discuss how Nita would actually become instrumental in making sure that Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Palpatine successfully landed the Invisible Hand on Coruscant during Episode 3. Following the heroics of Anakin and Obi-Wan in the Battle of Coruscant, their feats became known galaxy-wide through their rescue of the Supreme Chancellor but far less known were the actions of Lieutenant Commander Lorth Nita. While we certainly can't take away Anakin's incredible abilities in landing the fragment of the Separatist flagship, it's safe to say that without Nita's efforts in the battle, Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Palpatine would have been killed in their fiery descent to Coruscant's surface. Born upon Coruscant, Lorth Nita would join the Coruscant home fleet by the outbreak of the Clone War, serving as Lieutenant Commander of the Carrot class cruiser the Integrity in the home fleet Strike Group 5. With the Separatist attack on the Republic capital world, Nita and his strike group sprung into action to defend against the assault. And Nita didn't play a minor role on the outskirts of the main battle. As Anakin and Obi-Wan were rescuing Palpatine within the Invisible Hand, Nita and his strike group successfully trapped it, ensuring the flagship couldn't flee the battle. In fact, it would be Nita himself who would directly communicate with Grievous during the battle, attempting to persuade the General to surrender. Clearly, this wasn't going to happen, and when Grievous failed to prove Palpatine was on board the Separatist flagship, having been attained by the Jedi, Nita warned that if Grievous didn't surrender within 10 minutes, his cruiser and the capital ships of his strike group would destroy the Invisible Hand. Of course, before anyone knew the Supreme Chancellor and the Jedi were on board, the Republic fired upon the flagship, crippling it and causing it to begin its unavoidable plunge into Coruscant's atmosphere. As Anakin took over the flight controls, Obi-Wan would take control of the comm station, sending out signals to the Republic Navy that they captured the Invisible Hand and had Palpatine. Amazingly, Obi-Wan's codes reached none other than Lieutenant Commander Lorth Nita. It isn't completely apparent when watching Revenge of the Sith, but the novelization is clear on this point. During the Battle of Coruscant, the planet went into high alert not just in waging the space battle, but in protecting the planet from the devastation caused by the falling remnants of starships incapacitated overhead. Each time a defeated Republic or Separatist capital ship crashed upon the surface, it would leave massive craters up to 10 kilometers in diameter, killing untold thousands and destroying every structure within the vicinity. This alone, separate from the battle itself, left a disastrous impact upon the capital world. To better absorb these blows and minimize damage, surface defense towers, comprising banks of turbo laser batteries as well as dedicated starfighters, jumped into action to isolate the large fragments, intercept them, and thin them out in whatever way they could to protect the surface. What should have happened to the Invisible Hand is simple. Given its massive size, it would have undoubtedly been targeted by the surface defense systems of Coruscant and annihilated, rendering Anakin's piloting skills useless. However, this didn't happen thanks to the intervention of Nita. Immediately upon recognizing that the Jedi were in control of the Invisible Hand and had Palpatine, he contacted Grandmaster Yoda himself, begging him to stand down the surface defense systems, ensuring the capital ship wasn't fired upon by the turbo lasers or starfighters. This alone was enough to save the three important figures inside, but anyone could have recognized that standing down these systems was needed. Nita did something even more important. From his vantage point relative to the flagship, he recognized the protective plating on the hull wasn't just burning, but quickly falling off. And noticing the pilot of the massive vessel could only rely upon a bank of thrusters and drag fins due to the damage it sustained, Nita calmly informed Yoda that a flight of fire ships was needed to focus on the hull, as without them, the burn-off would be too severe for the ship to make it to the surface. 
Even more, Nita also made sure that an appropriate landing area was dedicated to the invisible hand, knowing that it wouldn't be making a landing so much as it would be a controlled crash, and therefore, a typical platform wouldn't be enough for the impact that was coming. Lieutenant Commander Nita relayed all of this to Yoda within seconds, who then ensured Nita's orders were carried out. With the Jedi Master confirming Nita's service to the Republic wasn't only valiant, but earned the gratitude of the Jedi Order. Nita found three ways in which the Invisible Hand needed outside assistance regardless of Anakin's skills as a pilot, with the failure to act on any one of the procedures resulting in certain doom for the Jedi and Palpatine. Nita's actions during the Battle of Coruscant saved Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Palpatine, and it was heroism that Anakin would never forget. And by never forget, I mean taking pleasure in brutally force choking him and then murdering his entire family. So there we have it, Nita's important efforts during the Battle of Coruscant. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. Or perhaps follow us on Twitter, at SWReadingClub, for updates regarding the channel. Or support the channel through Patreon, for access to exclusive rewards and discussions. If not for me... For not knowing when to say I'm sorry.